<sighs> okay, it's official. I'm here today to take the first steps to recovery. I'm here today to admit that I have a problem. Every free moment I have at this point since launch has been spent playing Animal Crossing. It's a real issue. Whew. I feel better already. What's up guys, welcome back or welcome in for the first time. Either way, happy to have you here for this Animal Crossing discussion or review or whatever you wanna call this. Happy to have you here, so without any delay, let's jump right into this. So like I said, since March 20th, I have not played really anything but Animal Crossing. I did download and play Panzer Dragoon for the video that went up a few days after the Direct Mini, but other than that, it has been nothing but Animal Crossing. In fact, it's taken me this long just to get a video out on the game because I've spent so much time playing it. But I mean, let's face it, we all really don't have that much to do right now. And from the looks of my friends list, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that I'm not the only one having this issue with Animal Crossing. I've got about 75 hours in myself right now, but I went and took a look at what some other people on my friends list have, and honestly, I kind of feel like I'm slacking a little bit. I mean, I've seen some in there as high as like 175 hours. I really need to step it up. But I mean, at this point, it's fine. It's definitely helped me get away a little bit and take a break from all this craziness that's going on right now. And it really is great to have a game like this with something like we're all dealing with going on right now. I don't think there could have been a better time for an Animal Crossing game like this to release. And if you've watched any of the other videos on this channel, you know that this is my first experience with Animal Crossing. And usually a game like that is just not really something I'm into at all. Games like Stardew Valley or The Sims, it's just not really my thing, but this, has kept my undivided attention since launch day. So honestly, I just wanted to make a video just talking about the game a little bit, the things I like, the things I don't. There's not that many I don't, but I wanna mention them. And uh, the one thing that I really wanted to start with here is the visuals. Now obviously this is a clean, simple art style, but this is done absolutely fantastically. The way the trees move has to be one of my favorite things in this department. Again, a very simple design, but the way the leaves move independently of each other, like when the wind blows or how much they move is depending on how hard the wind is blowing, it's amazing. It just looks so good. The water is another thing. Again, kind of basic, but the light reflections that hit the water at certain points in the day, oh my God, they're so good. Just for example, when you look at the water like in the middle of the day when the sun would be high, you see sharp glimmers of light on the water just like you would if it were the middle of the day in real life. But if it's cloudy or you know close to sunset, you just kind of see like the softer highlights in the water. It just looks so good. That might just be my photography brain picking that stuff out, but that is something I deal with a lot in a studio setting is kind of the way that light reflects off of things and how you can modify it to look different. So that's something that stuck out to me almost instantly and I just could not stop looking at it. It's just great, it looks amazing. And probably the thing I was most excited about and I have mentioned in previous videos was the museum and I can tell you that it did not disappoint at all. I've honestly tried to stop going in there as much as I did at first, just so when I actually do go in and take a look around that there's a lot more new stuff than just, you know, maybe the one or two things that I've brought that time. For a while, every time I brought in a new fossil or bug or whatever it was, I'd take a lap around, but I have stopped myself from doing that as much, just so it's like a little bit more of a surprise when I go downstairs and see like a full fossil completed or something like that, you know? I like surprises. And obviously, just like the rest of the game, as you would expect, inside the museum, it is absolutely breathtaking. It looks amazing. I like the insect area because it's kind of like an outdoor area, but contained inside, if you know what I mean. And obviously, I love the downstairs with all the fossils and stuff. That looks really, really good, too. But the aquarium area is definitely my favorite part, for sure. Now, I've got a decent amount of stuff in there, but... It's not even more close to what it's gonna be once it's actually filled up with all the bugs and fossils and fish. It's, it's gonna be amazing. I really cannot wait to see it fully stocked and completed. Like I said, I've tried to stay out of there a little bit and not go in as much as I was, but now when I do, 
I find myself staying in there for like 20 minutes at a time, just walking around or standing in front of a fish tank, just watching the way these fish swim. It just looks so good. It looks really good. I don't know how many times I've said that, but it does look really good. So the other thing that I absolutely fell in love with in this game is the crafting system. It's great. I think it's just the perfect amount of everything you would really want in a crafting system. I mean, even being just 75 hours in, which sounds like a lot, but it's actually not considering how long this game's probably gonna be updated and how long people are actually gonna be playing this game, which is crazy. But I think the greatest part about the crafting system is it's not overdone. There aren't 15 different types of rocks or 25 different types of this or that to make it confusing. It's all relatively simple, but still definitely enough to keep your interest and keep you wanting to make new stuff. Just honestly, because of the amount of things that you can make, it's crazy. And like I said, I'm only 75 hours in. I definitely don't have even close to all the recipes. But I mean, even just from the trailers I've seen, half the stuff in the trailers, I don't even have in my game yet. I've got a ton of other different stuff. But I, I really think they did a great job with this. Just not making it too complicated and too much to deal with. It's nice and simple, easy to manage. And I think I think the most complex thing you have to do in this crafting system really is maybe craft something and then use that thing and other materials to craft something else, which is fine. And I'm sure as the game goes on, that type of stuff is gonna happen more and more, but even if it does, and even if you have to take a few things that you've made to make something else, it's great. I love it. For the most part, it's basic, but it's very satisfying and very rewarding. And this may be an unpopular opinion, but I think Breath of the Wild 2 should have Animal Crossing New Horizons crafting system. And this video is already gonna be long enough, so I'm not gonna get into that here, but I am gonna make a video about that, so make sure you get subscribed so you can check that out. And once you've crafted this stuff, putting it inside your house is an absolute joy. The in-home editor is something I can't believe people played Animal Crossing without before. It makes laying things out in your home not only faster than pushing them around the floor, but it makes it much easier just to get a look at everything and you know, figure out what needs to go where and how to make things work. Now I've been trying to stay away from videos that are showing things that I haven't unlocked. So I'm not sure if this is a thing, but if it is, don't ruin it for me in the comments. But if they took that in-home editor and let you do that outside, oh man, that would be perfect. I don't know if it's a thing, it might be. Maybe not. If not, they should definitely put that in because man, that would make things so much easier out there. You guys better not ruin that for me in the comments. Unless it's not a thing, then just tell me, that's fine. Okay, so a few things I wanted to touch on quickly because I already feel like this video is going to be extremely long anyway. So the first thing, I wanna talk about the airport and really the online system in general. So I think the online is done pretty well. I mean, as far as I've seen, I haven't had any problems going to other people's islands and I haven't had any problems with people coming to my island. It all really just works as you would expect. I've also been using the local wireless with my nine year old and that seems to be working just fine too. Most of the time she's just coming over to my island to pick up all the extra stuff I've crafted for her so she doesn't have to do it herself. But yeah, all that seems to work. I haven't had any issues there at all, except that I have to get twice the material so I can get everything I have for her and me, which whatever, it's fine. Now there is one thing about the airport that I do not like, but it's kind of lumped in with the other stuff that I don't like, so I'm gonna save that for a little bit later. I wanna touch real quick on the villagers, my interactions with them and their interactions with each other. I find this very, very interesting. And it really stems back to one villager I've had on my island. His name is Pierce and he is a falcon or a bird of some sort, an eagle. I'm not sure what he is. But anyway, he likes to work out. Actually, he did like to work out. He just left yesterday, which whatever, fine. Anyway, he really liked to work out, which was fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I thought it was so strange that after a few days, not only was he working out all around the island, but he had the other villagers working out too, like all of them. I thought it was really strange. I didn't realize that they were gonna be able to like influence each other to do things that the other ones do. I just found that crazy. At first, I really just couldn't figure out like why everybody is just working out all the time on my island. I don't know. It was kind of weird to me. I, I found it very interesting and I think, I think it's really cool that things like that have an effect on the other people on the island. I, I think it's really cool. But it did start to get a little annoying every time I started walking around my island, everybody was just 
pumping iron all the time. Like, go go fishing, go catch a bug, do something. It was just weird. Anyway, he left. I've got a new guy moving in tomorrow, so we'll see what he's all about, and maybe I'll keep you guys updated. But I am curious, if you guys have something like that going on on your island, let me know in the comments. Do any of you have a workout guy? Or maybe it's something else, but definitely let me know. Now, this next thing is something I wanted to touch on that you may disagree with me on, but the Nook Miles tickets, I kind of feel like the islands are really repetitive. I mean, they're supposed to be random and then they burn the flight plans after, but they definitely don't because I've been to the same one multiple times. And again, this may just be my experience, so if I'm wrong and you've had a different experience, let me know below for sure. But I feel like these are not very well randomly generated. Either that or there's just not a lot of them and they definitely need to add more. I mean, yeah, they have different stuff on them from time to time, but the basic structure of the islands is just on repeat most of the time. Now, having said that, I do really enjoy going to those other islands. It's a nice change of pace from staying on your island all the time, and you know, sometimes there are some surprises there. One of my favorite things to do on these islands, actually, is I'll go at night. If there's nothing really good that I want or need, I'll clear everything off and I'll just tarantula hunt for hours. If you didn't know, tarantulas are worth 8,000 bells each, so if you can fill your inventory up with those, I mean, you know, you can pay for a couple bridges or inclines the next morning very easily. And actually, like two nights ago, I went to one and there were no tarantulas, but I did get a bunch of water bugs spawning and those are worth 2,000, so that was still a nice pickup too, and they were way, way easier to get, obviously. They don't fight back like the tarantula. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but maybe I've just been unlucky. Maybe there's a lot of stuff I still haven't seen on these islands, but if not, if this is the case, I think Nintendo definitely needs to update this and add some more islands in there. Because if this is all there is, it's definitely gonna get old quick. Another thing I wanted to bring up is the visitors that come to the island. Also one of my favorite parts of the game. The fishing tournament this past Saturday was a ton of fun and I, I can't wait till the next one. I've had the punk rock lizard guy show up on my island a few times and uh, you know, offer to pay me a bunch of money for bugs. And I'm sure there's a bug catching competition coming at some point too, so I'm looking forward to that. And those are just two examples, but I really do love all the people who come visit the island and it's like, Everybody has their own day of the week, sort of. So you'll have some vendors show up in front of the resident services building some days. And then on Sundays, the little pig, I think it's a pig, comes and sells turnips. So there's always something going on. The camel that comes to sell you the wallpaper and flooring, you know, there's always somebody there. It's really cool. That definitely helps keep things fresh on your island, for sure. Now the one thing I was kind of torn on, and I don't know, I did like it, but Bunny Day was well, I really like the idea, and I, I like the fact that there was like 40 recipes to get over the course of the two weeks. I just felt like, well, no, it did, 100%. It took over the whole game for those two weeks. Especially before the patch, it was almost impossible just to catch a normal fish. And the sky eggs, oh my god. The sky eggs. Now they did fix that with the patch. There weren't as many, but it still was just a little too much. And I thought it would have been a little bit better if maybe instead of just being able to get all the recipes right up front, I mean, you know, you could essentially do it in a day. If they would have kind of like drip fed some of the recipes in as you went along, it would have gave you a little bit more incentive to keep playing every day and finding something new. You know, once I had them all, that was it. Then the rest of the eggs and everything else was just kind of in the way. I mean, by the time that bunny showed up Sunday, I mean, I was so ready to get all this stuff off of my island. So I think the bunny day thing was pretty good. It was a little bit too much. I think if they just tweak that formula a little bit, they're gonna be onto something really awesome. I just hope they switch it up a little bit and don't let it take over the entire game for that long. So bunny day aside, I feel like the progression in this game is so, so satisfying. It's so rewarding. And it seems like there's just always something new that pops up. Nothing really gets stale. Even if you're doing some of the same things, it seems like they kind of present it to you in a different way or maybe add a little twist on it that just makes it feel like it's a completely different thing. Like for example, when you start the game, you help your other islanders pick spots for their tents. And you just go over there and you set the tents in and that's it. You know, and the next time you go through something like that, 
you actually go pick the spots and then you have to go craft furniture for the inside and the outside of the houses. After that, then you start paying for the kits and get miles in return when you get somebody to move in. So they really change it up. That's just one example, but they, they, you get what I'm saying. They keep it fresh and I appreciate that. I mean, 75 hours in. I know I've said it a few times, but I'm still, I'm just not bored. So I mean, they've got the gameplay loop locked down pretty well, in my opinion anyway. Okay, there is one thing I have to bring up and it's probably my biggest complaint about this game. And honestly, it's not even really a huge deal, but it is very annoying and I have to bring it up. Not being able to skip any of the dialogue is brutal at some points. And obviously I understand that reading the dialogue is important to understand what's going on in the game. But when I go into the museum to give Blathers a fossil for the 400th time, I just don't need to go through the whole spiel again and again and again. Just let me skip to the menu I need to get to and move on. Yeah, you can hit B and it, it, it kind of speeds it up a little bit, but that's not enough. I need to be able to skip this stuff completely. That is the one thing that is driving me nuts and it seems to be driving me a little bit more nuts and more nuts every time I have to listen to somebody say the same exact thing and let the whole dialogue play out again and again. That needs to be fixed. I really hope at some point in an update they will just give us some way to skip the dialogue that we've already seen. Another area where it takes a long time to do anything is inside the airport. There is so much dialogue you have to get through just to even open your gates. And then if you wanna go somewhere, it takes even longer. So yeah, I mean, it is annoying, but I don't think it's gonna make me stop playing the game anytime soon, but I really, really hope that they put something in there that we can skip some of this dialogue and I hope they do it soon. But I mean, yeah, that, that's really my only big complaint with the game. I'm absolutely enjoying Animal Crossing so, so much. And I really did not expect to enjoy this game this much. I'm gonna say by the time I'm done playing Animal Crossing, whenever that time comes, I will probably easily have more hours in this than I did in Breath of the Wild. And I played Breath of the Wild to death and I still play it. Well, I haven't in a while, but I will play it again eventually, maybe. I, I will, I, I'll definitely play it again. I, I will play it again. But yeah, I, I just did not expect to really just fall in love with this game the way that I have. But at the end of the day, I really just cannot recommend this game to you enough. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a 100% must play on the Nintendo Switch. Especially if you've got the time to sink into it, which right now I think most of us really do. So my opinion is if you have not picked up Animal Crossing New Horizons yet, you need to get into the eShop and download it right now and just start your island. Right now is the perfect time to do it. Okay, I have no idea how long this video is gonna be, but my guess is it's not gonna be a short one. Obviously I haven't covered everything in the game, mostly just the stuff that I've been enjoying and a few things that I've had some problems with. So if there's anything I didn't cover in this video that you have been enjoying, make sure you leave them in the comments below. That is gonna do it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like on this video. Make sure you are subscribed and we will see you in the next one.